The following is a review of a comic book and should not be looked at as an endorsement of the creator involved. If you really think that, you should have yourself checked out because you're reading into things that aren't there. Also, the quality of this video is low. If you're expecting higher standards, go check out me at Nerd at Newsstand or something else. What you see is what you get. Thank you and enjoy. Hey guys, StarCraft here, and like I said, I have a whole lot of Indigo through. I got in, as you already know, I got in, there it is. I got The Meg by Mark, M Mike Miller and Steve Alton and J.S. Earls. I already reviewed that. And I also got in Jawbreaker's God King. And of course, oh, come on. Where's the other one? Ah, don't you hate him? Ah, there it is. Earthworm Jim launched the cow and the making of Earthworm Jim. So, yeah. I'm going to be going over those. I've already went, like I said, I already went over the Meg. And now I know I did a general review of um, Jawbreaker's Lost Souls months and months ago but for the sake of making things sense for this one i'm going back over this as a spoiler review so yeah and i remember when i was a bit critical of there yeah going back over it i was being a little lenient rich you're a good writer i admit it you are good better than i am currently but when and i would say the main story of this is good but, and I can accept, and I will say this, the um, first book of your uh, God King, the one, your, one of your early comics, hold on, this one was also actually not that bad. Book two, on the other hand, is when things kind of get off the rails quite a bit. We'll get to that when I go, when we get to it. But yeah, let's just dive right in, shall we, with Jawbreaker's Lost Soul. First, we got Ethan Van Skyver's cover. Some people have been nitpicky about it. I enjoy it. I like it. I think it's a good cover. I got the signature by Richard. Now, just to both point out, I did have another copy of this one. But it was one of those ones that was warped because of how the mailer came through. But Rich was kind and kind enough to, as soon as he could, get a new one, send a new one off to me, and that's the one I have here. So yeah, we open up in Paris, France, as the Jawbreakers have taken out a giant monster on top of the um, Eiffel Tower. We have Silk, and we have Silk, not a knives out, um, cuff and cuffs. Devil Dog and Hell Priest as they're all making their way out of there. They, uh, they dive into the water and the banter between them is pretty funny uh, and pretty funny and humorous. And also John Mayland's artwork, I should also point out, very good. I do like it how they go underwater. They somehow and they attach themselves to the and to the um, to this um, boat. And I'm pretty sure they use Silk's powers to do it. They have rebreathers on them. As they're able to get away. As they meet up with Kill Switch. They're, well, they're basically their contact and pilot and driver. So, yeah, they head their way out until it, they see they have nothing else to do in um, Europe. So, he takes them to Nigeria where they're going to set up shop. And when they do, they're, I mean, already showing everything and we're introduced. Uh, first thing we see is her ass. As we're introduced to Sa and Sashi, or Zashi, or however you say her name. And she seem, appears to be this, um, well, yeah, this, uh, you, from when you look at her, you think, oh, strong woman and everything. Scampily drawn and all that. Um, native. And it's basically, um, wait, uh, sorry, silkworm. Silkworm. And I love cuffs like, I'm single. <laughs> and she basically gives them a bunch of gems as, the, as she hires them. And 
Okay, I already said there's going to be a lot of issues in that book, God Kill book too, but there's already some issues here already. As they're getting things prepped up, and Cuffs is already meeting up with Sashi, and they're already hitting it off, and she's falling for him very, right away. Now, given the stuff that go, we find out about her, there could be a reason for it, but I think it's just a little too fast. As they're then driving around, they're on the ground, and it feels like something's moving, a heartbeat. Now, I should also point out something else that Richard is kind of notorious for is revealing stuff off screen and we don't find out of it until the middle of the action and it's good for some things. He does it a bit way too much, if you ask me. As they're driving, trying to find their kill and then all of a sudden, this giant gorilla shoots up. There's them flying. Hey! As Silk then generates all these parachutes and a hang glide for him as he's able to fly using psionic abilities. But like I say, you go from on his back to straight up, it's a little wonky, just like, boom! It's like, uh, how did he get up? If he was laying down flat, how did he get up enough to just launch him? They didn't see his legs, so... It's stuff like that that makes sense in comic books, but when you really think about it, it makes zero sense. But yeah, um, they land, help reason, Devil Dog, find a vehicle, when Silkworm asks, um, what's the, uh, damage report? They say, hey, we're fine. I was referring to the vehicle as an ordinance. Oh, they're fine. Thanks for asking. And, uh, and, and jerk. As they head off and, um, Cuffs punches out the giant gorilla's eye. And he says, with the eye, I'm about to rock this fool with the power of a thousand slaves. To which you hear Silkworm saying, please stop saying that, Cuffs. We well, have no idea where your powers come from. Stop guessing. As the Double Dog says, Help, Reese, look out. Look out. Whereas the gorilla's giant eyeball lands on him, and as you can see from the, the hole, he's stuck in there. As Double Dog is trying to get him out, Silkworm is shooting at it, and Double Dog drives in front of it, and things like, Oh, wait, this isn't going to work. And then he gets stuck in the eyeball. Again, you see the little hole indicating it. As they are, as they're falling, and um, I love how Cuffs is like, Sashi, I swear, we're you, Sashi, I swear, we're usually better than this. As um, he then basically tosses um, Silkworm right at the gorilla, knocking him out, and seems to go right through his the, um, his jaw. Uh, Cuffs saves Sashi, and they start making out again. Quite fast. As Silkworm then starts tying them all up. Then they are met by this mercy and this um, leader of this these mercs. Who's based, and meanwhile Devil also Devil Dog and Help Reed get out of the eyeball. But yeah, there and that's who the ones who capture them though. Is this cyborg guy. And then we see um um it turns out they cut open the gorilla, bringing a whole lot of treasure in here, like Sashi told him. As we see the cyborg heading on out, as he's explaining how Sashi basically works for him, and it's been, they played him. And yeah, we then see as there, as um, Kill Switch is heading on over, we see, uh, now I chose the point out with knife head and hand, we, as far as we know, he's a silent type. But yeah, we see this old, what looks like a shaman walking up. Basically saying, you will all die. Sashi saying, telling her to you know, speak. And she's like, you stand in front of a river of blood. And who are you to, and to demand others? I have no time for your, the tale of shame. Run along, girl. Back to your master. I've waited my entire life for this moment. Now we reveal that this beast was once a normal gorilla till he entered these portals, separated from his soul, and was transformed. And basically, he uh, uses his abilities to heal the gorilla, giving him, bringing him back up. As they realize this convoy is on their way, and they decide to use the um, gorilla to help. And I love how Sick was like, I'm not dying to protect your god. God? I don't worship him. He's an ape. And he's saying, it's, again, I like, they were like how Rich is subverting things. As um, the... He put, and the shaman guy had put up a um, spell so they can't see what they desire. But Sashi is completely um, 
freaked out. She's like, he's more uh, and, he, uh, and he's more machine than man. Spells won't affect him as she's freaked out, but cuffs assures her things will be fine. And um, I then also love this. I need the rest. Anyone got a cigarette? I left mine in the pocket of my work clothes. Work clothes? You think I do this full time? I work at Telecom. Um, didn't, didn't you see the huge cell phone tower over there? Yeah, but I wonder how your coworker was saying with how skinny you are. But using the blood, he's able to put Silkworm in control of the gorilla. As Devil Dog and Hell Priest fight their way out and get out. But then as um, when they when they make it over and confront him, Asashi, she bolts. So much for being a strong woman. Okay, that's being a bit harsh. The most interesting thing about this is, is that Sashi was just appearing that little bit. Then people really liked her, so Rich started giving her more role uh, development, but then pulled back when he realized she's not supposed to take over. Not, she's not the star of the book. So what we've got is her being much more meaty. We'll get more to her in the next book. Don't worry. As basically, um, yeah, the local warlords of Cyborg, as they explain how they've been tricked, and yeah, it's and they're and they have a lot to deal with as they realize though as well that um they need to help this gorilla help him find his soul and they got the money from inside of him to pay it off we didn't see the cyborg warlord um who we never get a name for and he basically this um um when he said like why did you stop them from escaping corporal i i was driving the vehicle sir why did you notice they were gone until now you told me to watch the road. Hmm, your answers are reasonable, Corporal. But I need someone to blame as he breaks his neck. Does this guy look like a Corporal? <laughs> Must be an honorary ranking or something. As he meets up with Sashi. Then we, um... It's, you know, they it's, use a way to open the portals. And again, work your magic, old man. I'm, so, I, I'm only 38 years old. Magic has a heavy price. A pr I, I pay it gladly. As he sacrifices his body to um, give, you know, to basically give him a way of guiding the gorilla. Meanwhile, knife a knife's hand, and um, he yeah, deals with a lot of the warlord's troops as they try to help the gorilla out. But then the warlord starts attacking him. They want that gorilla and any more booty that it has in there, and uses blood organs to try and sell him out. As they go in for a fight. Cuff's making his way up to Sashi. As um, the warlord says, trade my, in my life for hers. Cuff agrees. But then, and this is the case where Sashi actually is a strong woman, she runs off towards the um, warlord. But, well, we'll get to that in a moment. As the girl's trying to get, get away, as Silkworm takes over, they make their way in just as Kill Switch shows up. Asking, and you know, he's like, what the hell is going on? But as they finally find where the portal is, he's about to go into it. The gorilla takes over, grabs a giant um, radio tower, and swings it, creating a big dust storm. As uh, the warlord snaps Sashi's neck. He just continues making a big mess until finally, after they're all distracted and he makes his way in, unfortunately, the portal that had his soul closes. And the gorilla is heartbroken. He's like... Yeah, he's giving up. But then um, Kill Switch, using this big gun, takes out all the war and the um, warlord's goons. And then when the warlord taunts them, saying, "You think that Soviet-era Russian tank buster can take down a 21st century super cyborg? Kill me!" He takes him out. And that kid is why pencils have erasers. Whatever, Kill Switch. And Silkworm convinces the gorilla to head on back, head into the portal. As he leaves, they give him good luck. And then um, they all feel devastated by what happened. But they're trying to, you know, they're making comments like Devil Dog's like, Hey, I thought my pocket was gold. Things like that. They make it home, give a toast to Sashi. And then um, we see Silkworm take out a photo of him with a young girl. We'll get to her. As now we get into um, Jawbreaker's Book One, or uh, Remastered, or God Kill Book One Remastered. As Richard said, and it says here, a lot of the artwork was done by him with Simon Bennett, who also did the coloring. And basically, a lot of this was 
while re retooling up his original work. And they're still in Nigeria. So this is set after the events of Lost Souls. More so as we get along, as you'll see. As um, basically there's this big the, the group, you know, building or facility. Hell Priest comes up by acting like a blind old guy. And I do like it how, ahem, Ephesus 2.16. No, and nor we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, he basically recites a, you know, a, a, a um, part of the Bible. Um, what the hell are you talking about, old man? For piracy of these troubled waters, thou art damned. For the murder of Bishop Umtu, thou art damned. We never did any of those. I ain't never been near the water. Yeah, we did a lot of bad stuff, but not the, none of the things you mentioned. Is this two, um, one, two, four, six, zero, Victoria's Cross Highway? No! Sorry, I'm blind, you know. <laughs> and I just like it. That's a report. Just a preacher at the wrong address. Wrong address? He can be anything. <laughs> Idiots. As they then start to make their way in. And um, dealing with a bunch of them. Um, they're pushing a tank without turning it on so it doesn't appear on the heat sensors. I like that. As they start shooting at it with Devil Dog inside. As, yeah, basically they just start blasting their way through, shooting it all. Um, we find out, of course, how Cups is bulletproof. Um, oh, we have a point where um, um, the black one is bulletproof. Boop, and a bulletproof black man? It's the Jawbreakers! Devil Dog, did you call me Bulletproof Black Man? Aircuff, why? I'm kind of loving it. Too long. <laughs> as, yeah, we have Hell Priest as the sniper, takes them and starts shooting them all. They're finding their way in more and more. Tanks on fire, they get Devil Dog out. Find out how strong Silkworm is, and he throws the, the tank. And they keep making their way through until they meet up with the leader of this. Who is Devil Dog takes his mask off and basically saying, we're here for you, not the girls, that he's ready to blow up. And it's basically the reveal they're going to, you know, they're there, they're not there to rescue them. No one wants to pay for that. But they'll take the Black Hawk helicopter that's worth 21 million. They could save for sell for 5 million. And then um, they also take out the guy, eventually shooting him. And but then Silk, while meanwhile, while he's holding the gun, had put up a barrier around the the girls so that when it did blow up they were perfectly safe revealing how strong his stuff is as then um but then once um knife hand uses his abilities a bunch of ninjas show up now why didn't show up in lost and souls since we also find out that apparently these ninjas who he worked with uh who he was a part of jump in every time he uses his abilities and but who knows that, that although they do also say um Hold on. Yeah, they say they get here faster and faster every time. And so, yeah, they keep fighting them off. They are starting to get away. But then they, one of them shoots off the rotors. It was a dud, but it still did the damage. Killswitch shows up with a woman named Autumn. As they do give him a rough landing and pull off that maneuver from Star Trek V. Shuttlecraft going, you know, um, barricade right through. And do something very similar. They get their way in, and we find out about Autumn Jade was a member of Heroes that took over in New York after the Jawbreakers left. She was known as Replicator, and um, they're going after a young person named, uh, that was known, Caden Jr., known as Star Baby. Basically, their mascot of that team. Now, we'll get more into this, but I actually do like some of this notion here. As it turns out now, he has become God King. That's all help read something fierce. As, um... Basically saying now he's taken over all of New York. They've taken out all crime. But after that happened, he took over. And basically, all the other heroes are dead. And all the people there are enslaved. And it's a suicide mission going after him. But they're like, oh, I'm not going to do it yet. Then we see that we get a little bit more talking. Turn out Cuff's a lot more smarter. He's a PhD in microeconomics from Princeton. But he's more, it's called, it's, a, it's called coast switching. It's a well-documented sociological phenomenon. Lots of famous people do it. In other words, talking one way when you're really to hide your true notions. And, well, they're starting to, um, he, and they're arguing about going back and everything. Obviously, um, Silkworm feels like, no, no. 
And then um, he goes to the hell priest, basically saying, you know, again, all of them are feeling like we should go in, we should go in. Devil Dog is about ready to say, I'll go in then. As he decks Silkworm, basically saying, I'll lead him, all right? Yeah, I did this suicide mission. You know it, I know it. I'm leading the team since you're seeing this one out. Autumn's joining us as well. And then, um, we turns out, Autumn is his daughter. As, yeah, Jay-Z saying, like, I stayed away like you wanted to. Oh, Killswitch told me why you did what you did. And she's not fragile, but he doesn't let her in still. Then, they're ready to go. Autumn is dressed like, um, Scarlet from G.I. Joe. But then Silkworm basically says, okay, I'm cousin coming along. Although, there's this little bit, it's a bit of a, I'm positive, Rich is going to eventually write about this. Stay away from the girl, Cuffs. Why? Because I'm black? Because of what you said when we were trapped in the tra Tower of Truth. Look, we all said some kind of uh, stu some stuff in the Tower of Truth. We all agreed never to talk about it, what we learned about each other. I can still think about what you said and act accordingly. Oh, well, I'm thinking about what you said. I'm thinking about what you said real good. And here's my reaction. Nasty. Nasty as hell. No idea what they're talking about, but I know Rich is going to get to that. Then they all start dropping their way out as, yeah, he starts using his abilities to do it. Um, basically, they're saying, like, yeah, God King, he can take us out lickety split. Help is able to even sense him as they all start jumping. And we also find out that, she, uh, that he had uh, cocooned Autumn in the ship to leave her behind. As they all jump on out, he uses his um, silk power, his abilities to give him a soft landing. But as soon as they get out, his guns start, their guns start to turn into rose petals as he's looking over it. But we see him packing a bunch of them. More on that later, but I actually do like that. After I read the book, to, the, um, the, the next book, that's a nice touch that I'm glad Rich never forgot about. But now we get into book two, and while it makes sense, it's way all over the place. As not, and now we're into a different artist now with um, um, Kelsey Shannon, uh, who's done Batman Adventures, different artwork. But here's the thing: Devil Dog jumps right in and is blown up by a marine, a psionic mine. As yeah, he's dying, and but he tells Switchblade, "Throw me on." And I'm just like, wait, you're already killing Devil Dog off. The guy you give Chuck this into the origin story in this one? You killed him off. It's like, that's the thing. We get a bunch of interesting characterization here that doesn't exactly line up here. But yeah, Devil Dog says, throw me under the mine so you take a lot of them out. Which Elpreece is pissed off on. But then you see um, Kill Switch flying down as... Um, as... Yeah, we're seeing, you know, like, everything blows up and Kill Switch is blown up. Well, that sucks. Then they decide to tell um, Kill Switch and uh, Knife at Hand to use his, um, his powers to cut something. Ninjas come in, they all land on the mines, blowing them up, giving them a way to get through. But as they do then, um, yeah, we find out that Knife Hand... He starts acting very different. As he now reveals that um, he didn't want to talk. His clan is dead. Now he's free. In other words, he did all this. They were playing a role. A pro uh, and he was basically lying to them until his clan was taken care of so he can go up and get revenge on the father that didn't pay for his ransom. Yeah. Again. What is even the hell? That's a little way out of the blue. And I don't really care for that. It feels like you see him throughout one thing. Then you find out, oh no, it was all a lie. Okay, I'm free to go. Screw you guys. As they take on out, as he laughs, I'm just mocking him. But he's like, you're a bunch of idiots. As we then find, they meet up with this vil old villain named uh, Chalk, who was the ruler of Manhattan. But now he's stuck serving hot dogs. That's what the God King wants. But he can't say anything, but instead he puts the mustard on one of their hot dog orders to tell them where to go to. Where they go to next basically takes them to their equivalent of Dr. Doom, Dr. Man. As he asks that they find out like what's going on and everything, what happened. 
as he starts talking basically reveals their version of the fantastic four we're being chased off by one of his killer app a robot the totalizer um as they go into another dimension but they're stuck in there running low on everything they decide to use all their abilities again equivalent to fantastic four to perfect a, a planet to um, be basically this help save their son and basically leave him there alone to be raised on there yeah that son will eventually well will you know he'll eventually go on to become the god king so in other words god king is basically franklin richards if he went insane now that i actually kind of like but there's more to it we'll get in the next book on uh, uh, the next one later but yeah the millennials that's the name of autumn's team rescued him he was traumatized worse and then he kills dr man as then the totality and to totalizer comes on through smashing their way in autumn shows up wearing double dog's outfit but has white hair now for some reason as um although we do get it's like tell us more out of here no i'm not the prime prime what as they bail out there before the totalizer gets them they crash land in their silk making a little cushion for them to land on as they meet their equivalent of Doctor Strange, Psycho Surgeon. He leads them in, trying to help them out. He's been keeping them on the radar with magic. And they basically use it to separate their souls so they appear dead. The totalizer are leaving. But then the assistant, um, Ra Rajiv, kills uh, Psycho Surgeon. Why? Well, turns out he's been putting off making him his apprentice. And now he's 39 years old. And his um, arch enemy Dreadlock, Dormammu in other words, saw his potential. And basically, well, with him dead, he eventually disappears. Although it's the case where like, there he is, and then, oh, he's gone. We don't see him leave. But you see what I mean? No, it seems like it's all over the place. Characterization is just wonky for shocking reveals. You see some of their bad guys showing up, grabbing them. Then we're introduced to this um, woman, Summer. Who's basically taunting him, basically saying how what you become, never take you for a coward, you know, choose him out, basically saying, like, I didn't want you in life. Why would death be any different? Beg and crawl won't stop. I'll never stop hating you. You're an elf, an evil man, selfish, cold, and cruel, yada, yada. And, um, but, and then, though, as we see Autumn come up, wondering what's going on here, who is that woman? Um, Right when Rajiv is about to kill her, Autumn, somehow Silkworm's able to get back to his body and kills Rajiv. Then they see, um, as they're getting up, yeah, but he says, to get away from my daughter. Yeah, Autumn's his daughter, as we're reminded. Although, we had Autumn earlier said, I know I'm your daughter, and yet this one's saying, you call me your daughter. Now, in the original review, I was completely confused, like, wait, shouldn't you know it? explained in this one but again i'll get to that as he gets up and he is so dismissive saying stop and let me help you up then he's saying yeah that's autumn's mother again he's talking so dismissive of her as this group then come in they um the dirt devils their rivals as they're taunting them and they, uh, they're saying like how they should be dead but god killed brought and god king brought him back and but then and it's like, oh yeah, we we met someone who said they did it. It was you, wasn't it? Of course, Cuff is like, we're roughnecks, not serial killers. We don't do trash like that. Now, I should also point out that they are... Wait a minute, I gotta double check something just for the next time. Yeah, they are inside a building. I say that because there's one big, huge inconsistency at the start of the next book, which I'll do next time. But yeah, basically we have it be, um, it ends right here with Silkworm saying how, what if I did? What if I told you I dream of it every night and wake up happy? What would you think of me then? And that's where we end. With some bonus stuff like about Hell Priest, how he's, fa um, Rich Rich's favorite character. Um, get Silkworm by Easton after, you know, his thing. Oh, yep, cover incoming. We see the pencil and the ink work for Easton's uh, cover. We see Pablo Romero doing some, uh, you know, some artwork. We see Sashi, uh, Miss Sashi doing her take on, well, her namesake, Sashi. 
We see Vincent M Michael Rush doing his own artwork that's very 90s. We see Sashi doing another chibi version of Sashi with Splato the cat and then a sign off. So I do enjoy this still. But that last book for God Kill, it does set things up for this one, but the stuff was nice out. I did not like it. Still felt like boinga, 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 boinga. Oh, yeah, here's this, here's that. Dog Day's death was way too anticlimactic, if you ask me. I mean, yeah, he laughs about it, but it was just like, what the fuck? Just felt too all over the place. But the main story, I really do enjoy. And even though I like, they do like the other two backup books. And again, after reading this, it actually puts a lot more context, so I appreciate it a lot more. But it just feels like he knows where he's going, but we don't. And he raises more questions that really makes you feel like there's a lack of right of uh, planning. When again, he's actually had it all planned out. But overall, I I have no regrets buying this. I have no regrets buying any of my books. So yeah, that's Jawbreaker's Lost Soul, my spoiler version. A very well done book, very well made, and uh, what else more needs to be said? I'll be getting on to this one and this one next. So, see you guys then.